wants it. He wants it to be the supplementary income in the teacher. Yeah. Well, the supplementary income, and he came and asked me if he could, if he could do the teaching part time. Mm -hmm. I said, yes, certainly, as long as you, as long as you do what yeah. I ask you to do here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and because uh, he had a, an X-ray and so on, and the, he got this patch of something on his lungs, mm -hmm. and because he finished up with offices one day, he said, uh, he said, we're in, the Trevor's in trouble, Bill, so I said, oh, is he? So he said, yeah, he won't be going abroad with us. So he said, he got to have an operation, we're going to take his lid off. We went, yeah. Well, I went to see him, I, I, I felt, it, that, that was the real upset in my time, that came to the United seeing him. I went to see him when I knew he was dying, and uh, I had, uh, I had with me, um, a contract, and I thought I'll get him to sign this. If it's only if it only makes him feel better for his wife, if you like. Mm. Um, and I took it and I said, just sign this, Trevor. I said, this is your contract for next season. And I, 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 I knew I was, you know, I, I was, mm. uh, it wasn't probably wasn't going to impress him, but I, I felt that it was the right thing to do, and it, he couldn't even write his own name. Oh. And, he, and he died. He died shortly after. And, and, and his wife grabbed the thing off me. I said, let me read that. <coughs> I'll never forgive her for him because I, I, I felt that I was doing the right thing just to make him feel better if only for a few seconds. Because mm. he knew. And the point was, you see, that <coughs> with Trevor, he was, he was, because he played again after, after he'd had, had the first operation, yeah. he played again and played a crew. And one of their, because they threw ball, and one of their players went and really clattered him and flattened him. And that's what started it all off again. And a friend of friend of mine up in Derbyshire, where I come from, he said to me, he'll, he'll almost get, almost certainly they'll get a secondary in his brain, which is what happened to him. And I, I've got a feeling that that when he got flattered, you know, that started it, mm. started it off again. Mm, yeah. But that that was my that was my side of the story. seeing him, like yeah. That. yeah. Even I mean, even even after getting the sack, I mean that it's something that you, you have to expect sure. as a manager. Yeah. Whether you whether you whether you're successful or not. Yeah. Um when United were voted into the league, we're going back to those times again. Um, they replaced Bradford Park Avenue. Yeah. And it, it, of course, you know, it didn't change much in those days between non league and the um, and the football league. Uh, but Bradford Park Avenue were long established, they were proud club, they're a big club in a way, weren't they? Yeah. Did you ever find out how uh, how it was taken at Bradford Park Avenue because being no. demoted out of the league was... I didn't know, but I didn't know. People people in, in, in Cambridge, the supporters, didn't realise how much work I did to get us in the league, along with along with Mr Woolley. I mean, Mr mm. Woolley, I, I dragged him about all, all over the country. Wrote to all the, all the, fir the first division clubs were the main voters. On who who stayed in the league and who went out, mm. so I invited all all the all the first division clubs, if they were in the vicinity, to call in the ground. I made sure that, that we have good groundsmen, and uh, I made sure that the ground was absolutely you you could have eaten off the off the off the ground mm. there because it was kept so well, mm. but it was all done with a purpose, so that people would see that we you know what, that the club was run properly. Mm. Mm. How would you say, well, you, you partly answered that already, but I'm, I was going to ask how the club had changed between 67 when you arrived and 74 when you when you left. Um, the, it, it must have been a completely different club in a way in those seven years. Uh, I, I imagine it was. Probably, probably the expectation was more... I mean, the, in, 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 my, in my opinion, uh, and I don't care who is me say it. I think I did more for that club than any other manager that they've had since. Mm. Simply and purely because they were going absolutely nowhere when I joined them. All they wanted to do was to do better than get. That's all I kept hearing when I first got there. Cambridge City, Cambridge City, Cambridge City, because Cambridge City had won the league and United hadn't. Yeah. And that's all they talked about, wanting to do better than them. And I put a different slant on it altogether. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Okay, so you'd left Cambridge United and you did have that brief spell at 
sheltered city, which some might have said was a brave thing to do, having pinched up their players. <laughs> yes. Well, Alan, Alan Cherry, Alan Cherry was the was the chairman there, yeah. and Alan Cherry was the, he, he, he is the sharpest man I've ever met in my life. He was a, I suppose, he's a multi, multi, multi-millionaire by now. Right. Um, but he uh, he rang me and uh, asked me if I'd go to Chelmsford as manager. And I said, well, I said I'll come down and talk to you, but I've got a question that I want to ask first before I say yes or no. Mm -hmm. So he said, what's the question? I said, I'll don't, I'll give you that question when all the others are there, all the other directors are there. So I went down there to meet him, and uh, Bairstow was uh, also on the board. You've heard of Bairstow Eves, haven't you? The yeah, yeah. Well, John Bairstow is a crook. Oh. He's a crook. Oh. Well, John Bairstow and a solicitor, the three of them had been at, uh, what's the other football club? They'd, they'd, been, they'd, they'd actually taken over another football club. And the day after they'd, they'd taken it over, I can't remember the name of the club now, we used to, I used to bow my, when we played them, I used to stop my player, they used to have all sorts of things on after the game, and none of my players were allowed to stay there. Have you got ambitions to get in the league? And to a man, they all said, oh yes. I said, number two, have you got the finances? Oh yes. Right, I said, in that case, I'll take your word for it, I'll join you. So having got there, I start looking at the books, and to me things didn't add up. You won't believe this, but at, at, the, at the far side, the, the, the popular side, if you like, mm. of the ground, opposite the stand at Chelmsford, mm. I went, because I amended all the, all the uh, turnstiles, first thing I did when I got there. Mm. I mean, it's daft, isn't it? So it doesn't, you think it doesn't make sense. I go over the back, the back of the the popular side. There's a hole in the, as big as this that wall there. There's a hole in the fence, and I've been saying to the people at the ground, "They're more than that here, weren't they today? They've been coming in for nothing." Mm. You know, it was that that that's how the club was, and the and in my mind, I'm saying to myself, "They've only got one thing in mind here, and that is that they want to run the club down." So the previous manager. At Chelmsford, and I've forgotten his name. He, he was a he was a clerk at uh, at the uh, was it uh, D Dagenham yeah, Roach right. Company. That's mm -hmm. what he was. Ford, yeah. Yeah. Well, what I what I did, I called a meeting with all the all the people who who were uh, who were selling the lottery tickets and so on for the club. Because they were making they were making no money out of it. Yeah, right. What they were doing, they were pay, they were paying money to the people who were hawking these tickets about, but they weren't making any profit. Mm. And I had about three hundred people there at this meeting, and they all saying, "Well, we don't we don't need the money, Bill. We don't need the money. You can have it." And it was absolute chaos. It was so obvious what what they were doing at the club. Mm. So what I did, I told the newspaper. All right. Right. I told them they were printing the newspaper, so they called me in one day and said, Bill, we don't like the way you're talking about the club. I said, that, okay. And I don't know what got me talking about that. <laughs> no, no well, it, it, just a brief, your brief time at uh, Chelmsford. Um, and then... Had you stayed in Cambridge, in, in Cambridge, living in Cambridge, while you were at Chelmsford? Or no, I bought a house in Chelmsford. I bought a beautiful house in Chelmsford. Right. Yeah, uh, but then, but then you, you came back to the Cambridge area anyway. Didn't I stayed you? with Una Parker for a while. Right. We stayed with Una. Okay. Um, and then, uh, then what did I do? Um, you were working as a milkman at one point, weren't I, you? Well, I did, I did that. I did that actually to, to give me something to do. Right. Because because I couldn't I couldn't take up employment because I was waiting for a settlement figure from United. Uh, they get they actually gave me five thousand quid. They owed me a damn sight more than that because I was on. I mean, I sold Brian Greenall for thirty thousand quid. Yeah. And I was on five percent of anything over what they cost me, and I got him for nothing anyway. Yeah. 
And I, I got into nothing because Ian Greaves was manager at Huddersfield, yeah. and I had an arrangement with Ian Greaves that if he was going to let any players go, he'd let me know first. Uh, we were in hospital together in Manchester some years before that. Right. Uh, so I had that, I had that arrangement with him, and. Uh, uh, Oh, I was waiting, waiting for a, a settlement, yeah. And I knew, I knew the, at the uh, co-op dairy, I knew the foreman there, mm -hmm. and he was wanting somebody to do a round for him out the Ely way. I said, I'll do that for you, keep me fit. Yeah. And would you feel, I thought I was, I, I honestly thought I was fit, I lost a stone and a half. Because <laughs> I, sta I stayed about five months on the, what do you call it, on the mill ground. Yeah. And uh, I, I got to like it, actually. Yeah. I would imagine it's quite good, yeah. yeah. So, all the time out at Ely, was it? Or did he do well, other no, ones? No, 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 I, I didn't do that for long because it was going to farm some farms and, <laughs> yeah. you know, places like that. Yeah. I no idea where so I finished up uh, doing, uh, uh, where did I do? Oh, Bar Hill and oh, all right, yeah. that. I did, I, did that, I did that for quite a while. Yeah. But eventually you ended up at, at, at Cambridge City, of course. How, yeah. did, how did that come about? Well, that, that actually, I had a shop, didn't I? I bought, yeah. bought, I bought the shop on, on Castle Hill. Castle Hill, yeah. And I did, I did about 11 months in there and just decided it was too much for me. And uh, they, about five times they asked me. Actually, I, when, uh, when I lived, because I, I lived in Impington, I've, I've lived all over the place. I lived in Impington and the directors from, actually got a phone call from the Secretary at Cambridge City mm -hmm. uh, about it'd be about ten o'clock one night when I was doing the mill round because I was up about four o'clock in the morning yeah. Yeah. and uh, I got this phone call asking if the chairman could come and see me and I said I said what for and so uh, I said I said I've, I've got to be up at four o'clock in the morning go go to work so I said well we'd like to, we'd like to come and see you and they kept on and on and on until they came I said okay then but but don't stay long. Anyway, they came. God knows what time it was when they left. They offered me twice as much to go to Cambridge City as I was getting at Cambridge United. Right. And the first, the first thing I said to them, I mean, they always went on afterwards. The first thing I said to them was when they said, we'd like to come and join this manager. I said, have you still got a manager? Well, they said, yes. I said, well, you can come and talk to me when you haven't. Yeah. Because I, I, just, don't, I just don't go along with that. Yeah. Going to somebody's back. Uh, I forget who the manager was, it wasn't Tommy Beckett's no. it was somebody who followed him. But they, they offered me twice and wanted to go there. And I said no. Mm. Alright. Um, what? Uh, but did you ever think you, you might have um, pursued um, management at uh, another club, a league club? Or did, it, did the opportunity ever arise? or? Really. If, if I'm honest with you, I could, I could have left Cambridge United, I could have left Doncaster Rovers for better jobs, and Shirley will tell you, I said, when I, in, in management, I mean, I went, I went, I went to Doncaster. When I, when I went to Doncaster, I'd been down here all summer, you know, at St. Ives, and mm -hmm. when I got back, my phone, I hadn't been in the house 10 minutes, the phone rang his own. Manchester City, Walter Griffiths, his name was, the, the secretary, rang up. He said, and his words were, where the bloody hell have you been? And my reply was, what the bloody hell has he got to do with you? Because he gave me, he put me on the transfer list. They supposedly paid ten and a half thousand quid for me, and they wanted seven and a half thousand quid for me nearly eleven years later. Mm. And that really rubbed me the wrong way. Mm. 